Then, when independence came, the reason why this was perpetuated, one of them, was because there was a shift of war. That shift of war gave the government in Nairobi an excuse to continue the marginalization of that region. And um, nothing was happening. Laws were introduced which continued to marginalize that area. It was called Special Operational Zone. When you were not you were going there, you needed a special permit to go there. And there you found policemen wearing jungle fatigue and dealing with the people as if they are foreigners, their own country. I'm saying you that it was just truly on his first trip to, to Mandela was shocked when we were kicked out of a routine and we found ourselves completely helpless, there's no way to sleep. The DC had given instructions that we would not be accommodated in any of the hotels. The owners of the hotels were told that if they accommodated us, the hotels would be closed. So we found ourselves sleeping in somewhere under a tree in the compound of a friend of ours. The, the one, our, our friend Mr. Yusuf, he passed on last year. The one who took us to his uh, parents, and because there was only one bedroom available, we allowed the only woman in our delegation to sleep there. As we were sleeping in bed, but just under the tree, being woken up in the morning by Somali BBC. <laughs> That was a, a special operation zone. They were told that what we had done elsewhere, we could not do there. This is 1992. And uh, so, this is what really explains the reason why this region has been, I mean, they have continued to neglect it. Then came the session with paper number, number 10. That's basically gave it an intellectual basis that you invest more in high yielding areas and the low DR areas, marginalized areas, will benefit from the trickle down effect of that development. At how Makomu we have to buy Kukameza is an intellectual machine. Now I don't tell you.